Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, MLA and APA style and to see what type of like hints and tricks we can give people to do um, all those final checks before you turn in final papers. Uh, my name is Lisa Vance Wall. I work in the South Campus Writing Lab and you can reach me at the um, email address there um, for virtual help right now. And when we go back to campus, I will be on South Campus. Uh, so today's agenda. First thing we're going to do is talk about getting started. Sometimes that's the hardest part of writing a paper and working on it is where do you go when you get that uh, writing assignment? Sorry about that <laughs> um, phone call in my mother's house where I am recording and I don't know uh, how to turn off her phone. So we'll keep going. Uh, the uh, getting started is sometimes the hardest thing to do and sometimes it's taking that plunge. So we'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit about format basics, whether it's MLA or APA. Talk about how to use quotes, meaning what do we do uh, content wise to make them important and impactful in your writing, as well as how to format them correctly. Really closely tied to that is in text citations. How do you give credit for the, the work that other people have done that you're using to kind of reinforce your activity and your our arguments? And then finally, the references uh, and works cited pages. All of these uh, sections will have MLA and APA and the next thing that we'll do is just have some questions. If anybody has a um, if anyone has mom mute yourself please. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is talk about any questions we may have. So to get started with a paper, the first thing that you'll do is read your assignment, read the guidelines once, twice, three times, uh, and think about those first steps. What did your professor tell you in class? What do you need to think about to get ready for a paper? Um, and just start writing. I think the best thing to do is write from the very beginning. Um, sometimes people, uh, I often see papers in the writing lab where people will talk about needing to do their formatting later, or I'll indent my paragraphs later. Well, that's not really that, in, that, that seems kind of uh, adding extra work to yourself. So why don't you start from the beginning? Set up your paper with the format right from the start, and that way it's not something you have to go back and do at the end. If you hit a roadblock, you don't know what to do. Ask for expert help. Go see a tutor. Go see a librarian. Just because we're not in person doesn't mean we can't talk to you. Um, we're accessible online uh, during normal hours, working hours. So please feel free to come and see us. Think about your timing. It's always uh, important to think about that, even though it is difficult sometimes in the um, crunch of multiple classes and multiple assignments, uh, try to give yourself that time you need to be able to put your paper down and come back to it. Always um, giving yourself a few extra moments to be able to um, reflect and look at it with fresh eyes can give you another um, perspective. And proofread it last time, um, one last time before you've uh, submitted it. Once you proofread it, um, you you feel like you've read it so many times, but um, you can always find that small little typo or a sentence you didn't finish correctly. Um, have someone else read it for you. Uh, contact the tutoring um, services and have us uh, look it over. It's fairly painless. And then finally submit it on time. So moving on to the next section, if we're talking about MLA papers, uh, MLA papers are double space, 12 point font, one inch margins. 
uh, you don't have title pages when you have a MLA paper. Your information, your name, instructor name, course date, all are in the top left. And everything is double spaced from the very first line all the way through. No extra uh, lines in between paragraphs or anything like that. The In the header, starting on the fir first page, your last name and the page number in the top right hand corner. Uh, Often, one little tip for the header is you will see the um, font is sometimes different. So if you use Times New Roman in the body of your paper, you'll need to manually change the top header. Otherwise, it'll be a different, it often is a different font. APA uh, has fairly similar requirements, um, double space to standard font, one inch margins. Your Paragraph, your page number is just your name, or is just the page number without your name. Um, it's a reference page instead of a uh, works cited page. Uh, both of those pages in MLA works cited and uh, APA reference page, they start on a, a new page um, and you center the title of that. APA does require a title page, and I can show you um, later what an example of that would look like. But as you can see on the slide, um, that's the information that you'll um, cover. Sometimes in APA, you would have an abstract page. Um, often in the length of papers that we write at FSCJ, we may or may not need, require an, an abstract. And so instructors often will give you information on that in the assignment, whether they'd like you to include the abstract or not. Um, for much longer research papers, uh, those tend to have um, an abstract. An abstract is just a quick paragraph that summarizes what the entire paper is about. Um, and that would be on page two, but it may or may not be required. That's something you'll want to ask your professor about. The important thing to think about when you're looking at formatting, whether it's APA or MLA, is that you follow any instructions that your professor wants you to use. And sometimes it varies a little bit. Uh, from the traditional standards of APA or MLA. I've seen uh, MLA professors who'd like an MLA formatted paper, but they also require a specific type of cover sheet or title page. When it, That's not standard for MLA, but it is standard for that course. So just be sure that you're following all the instructions that you're provided by your instructor. Once you've got those mechanics of sorting out margins and fonts down, um, you're going to start writing. So if you're writing an argumentative paper or research paper, you're going to use quotations, probably any sort of analysis. So you're going to use that. Um, a quotation should be used to support what you're saying, but that should not be the argument. The argument should be what comes from you. So use reputable academic sources. There are many. Uh, we have librarians available online to assist virtually. If you have trouble finding the sources that you need, we have so many online sources right now and we the library has been acquiring even more of them um, since we've been in a remote learning situation so there are lots and lots of materials that we can use even if we can't touch books physically even when we are um, on campus uh, much of our many of our resources are actually available online as well when it comes to quoting um, less is more we want to have a quote that um, is impactful and it supports your argument, but we don't want to rewrite somebody else's argument or somebody else's ideas, uh, but their ideas may influence and support yours. If you have a quote that exceeds four lines in MLA or more than 40 words in APA, which is about the same amount, it's just the way they um, define it is a little different, um, it requires special formatting. The quote needs to be indented. There's a special way that you do the in-text citation. I'm not going to cover that today, but there are resources available if you do have quotes like that. One other important thing when we think about quotes is you can't just plop a quote into the middle of a paper. But I need to know why it's there. If I'm reading the paper, I want to know what what was the reason that you're including that. So you want to introduce your quote by kind of giving a little bit of context, maybe you're quoting an expert or maybe you're quoting, um, if you're analyzing a book for an English class or a literature class, 
you might be giving something, an example from the, uh, the story that you've read. Either way, you want to give some sort of introduction and you never want to end a paragraph with a quote necessarily because you want to kind of give an explanation. Why did you that explains why you included that in your um, paper? So for in-text citations, this is giving credit um, within the text. So I gave a few examples here so you could see what that might look like. Um, you use the last name of the author and the page number for MLA citations. And sometimes we don't have an author name, sometimes we don't have a page number, um, but we just do our best. So in the first example, we have all we need. We have the author name and we have the page number. So it is clear that for a solution to be sustainable, it needs buy-in by more than one side. So the citation is the, functions as the last word of the sentence. When you have um, the author's name within the sentence, you only need to include the um, page number at the end. So it's the same quote. If there's no author, you could use the a, a shortened title of a work. If it's a really long article and the title is, you know, goes over two lines. You're not going to use two lines worth of a um, in-text citation, but the first couple of words. Um, basically, the rule is with in-text citations, whatever, however you've listed your references at the end of your paper in your work cited or your references page, um, the first words, usually an author name, but it could also be a title if there is no author, are what we're looking for in the uh, in-text citation. So that way we can go immediately from the in-text citation to the reference list and find that uh, inform the more information about that um, source if we want to. If there are two authors, um, you put both names. If you use more, if there are three, than, three or more authors, you just use et al. If there are no page numbers, just use the last name or the title. So there's no, um, it's not complicated there. Um, if you don't have the information, you can't use it. In APA, you also do in-text citations. They're a little bit different. Same theory applies. They're the last, the citation is the last word of the sentence. But in APA, you use the author name, the date, which was the, just the year, and a page number with the small p. Um, in, ML, in APA, you may see different types of formatting for in-text citations. Um, sometimes you'll see like the first example shows, Manji 2019, page 13, but often you might see use of the author name within the uh, text followed by the year, and then you just put the page number at the end. Um, there are more variations that you might see in APA than you do in MLA. You never use the, um, in MLA, you wouldn't necessarily use the, the year within the sentence. When there's no author, again, use the same shortened version of the title. Two authors, same, ver same system here, except you use the and symbol rather than the word and. And the same thing in the case of three or more authors. There are no page numbers. In APA, one distinction is you might, if it makes sense, you might say uh, use a paragraph number or a section number um, if there is something like that that breaks up the uh, uh, page you're reading. So ultimately, we have we started formatting. Then we've worked on um, just getting started and writing some things, including quotes, incorporating them providing those in-text citations. And I always encourage people to work on the work cited page, the work cited and references page from the very beginning. When I write papers, when I write things, I like to start with the bibliography because it's my favorite part. It's very comforting to have all those resources. So for me, I tend to just um, compile a huge list to begin with. And then you can always take things out if you don't, if you end up not using them, but I find it uh, it's a little pickier kind of work, and so if you do it from the beginning, that's not something that you have to do in a rush when you're tired at the end of the process. So, um, 
the next idea is to think about how you're going to include this information. So in your references page for um, APA, basically we're looking at author, date, title, source. That's the most basic level of thinking about the information that you're going to provide. APA in some ways is uh, a little bit flexible in that you're going to provide this information in whatever form you have it, right? So not every source has the same type of information um, and not every source has everything that you need to make the uh, uh, to make the perfect citation. So while you may have an author, maybe the um, maybe the date was a little unclear. Maybe the um, pages are kind of strange. Maybe there can be all sorts of things that are a little bit difficult to find with online sources. Sometimes dates can be tricky to find. Um, so what you need to do is look a little bit closely at some of the sources that you're using just to be sure you get um, as much information as you can. The next, um, this is a terrifying slide um, and I apologize for that. It does show a little bit of difference between MLA and APA. MLA basically is doing the same thing that APA does. We have an author, we have a title, we have um, a date and we have sources, but MLA is a little more strict in terms of how um, everything is uh, organized. So in some ways you kind of can come up uh, up against the same sort of um, challenges because sometimes you have missing pieces of information. So just include the information that you have. This example is from uh, an academic journal. So in this example, we have the author and the title and the journal name, the journal information, publication date, page numbers, database information, um, a DOI, um, often, Online sources now have DOIs, but there are still some that don't have a DOI, so you use a URL instead. Um, and so I think that sometimes you're gonna have some of this information, sometimes you'll have all, but however um, much you have, just try and uh, piece that together. So I'm gonna give a couple examples from each um, format and some, of the, some different examples. I pulled examples as if I were writing a paper about reality TV. So the first page, we have some books. Um, and these are sources that I've pulled from um, the LLC. So these are available um, from our libraries. And the first book by Annette Hill is a physical book. So that is the process for a physical book, author name, title of the book in italics, the publisher and the date. The second book is an ebook. So here we just designate that it's an ebook. So that piece of information goes in um, later on. If it's a specifically formatted book, um, you might have a Kindle publication or something like that. If there's something more specific than ebook, you can put it in that way. For APA, you notice that the difference is basically in where the date is placed. You use the first initial of the uh, author name rather than the full first name. And one other interesting detail between MLA and APA, well, if you just glance at it quickly, these look almost identical. Oh, there's a typo in that APA one. I didn't take out the 2015 at the end. Um, so that's a mistake. But, um, but what you have is, if you look closely at the um, Andrzejewicz uh, book, in MLA, everything's capitalized case-wise, um, title, like you normally see titles of books. Um, in APA, within the work site or the reference page, only the first word is um, capitalized. After a colon, you capitalize whatever initially comes after the colon, you go back to um, lowercase. So that's something to um, be mindful of. Uh, because within the paper, you would use normal title cases, but within the reference list, it's different. Some articles. Uh, 
same sort of thing is happening here. Um, everything kind of fits in its place. There are all sorts of uh, generators and things online where you can put in the information and it will spit back the uh, citations for you. That can be a helpful place to start, but you always want to verify those because sometimes they don't necessarily interpret all of the information correctly. Uh, pay attention to uh, italicizing the correct things. When it comes to titles, titles go within quotation marks um, of articles, for example, or chapter titles. But if it's a book, a magazine, a newspaper, those things are italicized. So you'll see in MLA, uh, that second example was taken from a database. And so we have a DOI, we have what the database name is. So you have a couple of layers of sources. So you have, first, you have the article that you're reading, which came from the journal of popular television. And that article came from the database, film and television literature index. So you have a little bit more information about every container. Often when you see um, resources about MLA, it talks about containers. And so you have a series of containers that you can, can follow through there. On MLA, um, often you'll see the that final statement that accessed and a date. Um, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. It's for something like a an article from a, an academic journal. I always include it because why not include it? Um, but it's probably going to to be the same way every time you access that because it's a published journal. When the access date becomes more important is if you're thinking about websites, often websites can change. So if I look at a website today and get a certain piece of information from it, and then maybe that gets updated or changed um, if it's a open kind of access open source type of site, or if the editor just kind of is, always kind of updating, you might have a different version. So if somebody went back and looked at that site, they might not look at the same thing you saw. So it's important to um, kind of acknowledge when you looked at something. And then the final example was um, an online magazine um, article, which is a fairly common um, type of reference. Again, when we look at, oops, when we look at the APA versions, we have a similar sort of information, but it's just presented a little bit differently. Um, the date is still close to the beginning. Uh, in APA, one new uh, twist is that now in the most recent version of APA, the seventh version, if often on very extensive research articles, there are lots and lots of authors. Um, APA requires now that you list up to 20 names so if there are 15 people that contributed and have author credit on an article, you have to put in all 15 um, rather than using the et al, um, which is possible in MLA. So MLA requires just two names and then you can use et al for three and more. APA now requires all the names up to 20. And after that you use, they have a specific formatting. I think it's, um, not that common of a, a situation, but there are specific guidelines for what you do if you had 27 authors. Um, once you get past 20, they require you to do it in a specific way as well. So just paying attention to where the information goes within the um, citation. Sometimes I know when um, students are in classes, humanities classes tend to use MLA. Um, Sciences, social sciences tend to use APA, but um, often professors give students the choice. Um, but sometimes you may be in a class that requires MLA and one that requires APA, so you're doing them both simultaneously. So it's important to kind of um, keep your head wrapped around the one you're working on for the moment. So think about that. Now we have so many uh, of our resources that are available online. Many of the papers that I see um, come through the writing lab have almost universally online sources at this point. And so that can mean a lot of things. It could mean a magazine article. It could be a journal article. It can be 
something specifically from the library website, but it could just be something from the internet. Um, the first example under the MLA section is just a website. That's the editor's name. I was lucky that I picked something that there was an easily findable editor. Um, so if I'm just citing the entire website, not anything specific, not a specific article. This is what it would look like in MLA. In APA, you wouldn't include that in the reference list. Um, instead, you would mention it within the text of the of the paper. The difference is if you cited a specific article from a website, that's when it makes it to the reference list in, M in APA. So the next two give some examples of that. Um, the IMDB example, that didn't have a specific author, but it was clearly produced by that website. So um, you can just consider that as being a, a corporate author. And in the same way as everything else, the article name within quotations, the uh, website itself in um, italics, and then the URL and access information. For APA, it's a little bit different. Um, and so you can see how those distinctions are made. In APA, if you don't have a, um, if the author is a corporate author and it is also the name of the website, you only include it once as the author. You don't include it a second time. So that's something to, to consider as well. And then the final example is just another kind of online example of um, what it would look like with a newspaper. Um, and I did get this from a database, but at the same time, it, it um, shows a little bit um, what the difference is when you have a um, newspaper site. Finally, um, podcast videos, film. I didn't include social media, but there are also ways to specifically reference social media. Uh, if, for instance, you were writing um, a paper that dealt with current events issues, that might be really um, appropriate to address a Twitter um, comment or someone's Instagram story. Uh, and there are ways to specifically um, quote those as well and cite those as well. Um, here I have a podcast, a YouTube video, and then just a regular a film. Um, so the film is the easiest. Uh, they look very similar, as you can see. It's just basically about the placement of the, the date. Um, and again, with the capitalization, you can see that difference. Um, when it comes to the videos, um, the YouTube video, it's a little bit just about the placing. APA gives a, asks for a little bit more information about the uh, what is this source? So in, in APA, you say it's a video. Um, in the uh, podcast, you say audio podcast episode. So, and again here, when I was looking at these podcasts, it didn't provide me all the information that I could possibly want. So they didn't necessarily have episode numbers per se. So I just didn't include it because me imposing my own idea of what their episode numbers are might not make sense because if somebody looked at the, that themselves, they might not find it. Um, also, I could not find the full names of the uh, hosts. So no matter how hard I tried, all I could find was their first names. So I included their first names because that was the best way to um, include that information. So sometimes you have to make a modification to what uh, the people are providing you. And this is particularly important when it comes to web resources. All right, so I'm going to pop off of um, this uh, PowerPoint for a second to show you a couple of things within the um, on the internet um, that would be helpful. So. Some of the things that. I talked about today, we're going to be able to find on the library website. So this is um, kind of the main uh, place for anyone to go if you have any sort of questions about uh, references or you need resources or you need help. Um, 
first I'll say this is where you can access um, information about how to get tutoring. Um, this gives um, very detailed information about how people can schedule uh, tutoring sessions within the um, tutor match system, which is in BrainFuse. And you have to access that through your MyFSCJ account. But um, if you have any difficulty with that, you can always um, use these videos and uh, resources to, to um, gain access to that. Um, another thing that will be really important and helpful is the research tab. So this gives us access to all of the library resources. And what we have here, particularly important for our topic today, are we have some LibGuide pages. We have the APA 6 and 7. Um, APA just updated its um, style format. So there are a few changes between 6 and 7. Uh, and this happened kind of in the middle of the year. So when this happens, um, professors kind of will give you guidance on what they prefer for you to do. A lot of people um, don't change over until the next full school year, um, mostly because a lot of books and things get printed with whatever's most current. Um, and so everything probably had six, and now seventh is possible, but we have both. So under the seventh, this will give all sorts of information about how to use the uh, style guide, some new things, um, a summary of the changes. There are a few different things about um, how a student paper might look. It's a little bit different. Um, there are a few citation things that I've mentioned. And then also what's really helpful is the section, how do I cite? So if you wanna see more examples, I wanna know how to cite uh, a government document. Oftentimes people come in with something like that. Um, something that the Federal Reserve um, compiled or, or something like that. You can um, look at these examples and they give you a number of different ways, no matter what they are. We also have LibGuides for um, MLA as well. We do not have a Chicago style guide, but it's very rarely used. Um, however, if you do come to the writing lab, we can help you with that as well. MLA is further down the list, um, obviously alphabetically. Uh, but there are also some useful uh, resources within this about, uh, within the LibGuides, how to find the best reliable information. Um, this is the MLA um, citation guide. And this um, right here will bring you back to that terrifying uh, slide that has all the arrows and the colored boxes with the different types of information that you need. But it looks much more palatable in this um, document that we've um, gotten the permission to use from a, a Canadian college, actually. And they um, kind of color code all of the different pieces of information that you're going to use within a citation. So that's a really helpful uh, resource. And that's another way that you get um, examples. Uh, the best thing, I think, sometimes with some of these uh, citations is to get an example. Um, it's in tech, in text citations are pretty easy. Get the author name or the uh, the the title of your paper, or page number. That that's pretty easy to do. But it's those end bibliographies that sometimes give you trouble. And the best thing to do is look for something that looks like what you're um, uh, citing, so that way you can compare. And that's helpful. Um, another area that can be helpful is um, to go to our um, databases and journals. And we have a couple of resources that could be really helpful. Um, Academic Writer is one that's very helpful if you're writing an APA. Um, I think they're still continuing to update the, uh, um, they're still continuing to update it for um, APA 7, but it provides Lots of different tutorials and examples, sample papers, all different types of resources um, for writing an APA. You can also get information about um, the sources from MLA and APA directly as well. So I think that's about all I have in terms of the uh, website um, information. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. And 
open it up for any types of questions that you might have. I do have um, handouts that give very specific and detailed information about all of the different types of uh, resources that we have um, talked about today, but even all of the other um, more detailed examples that would be impossible to include. Um, the handouts that I have um, also include uh, examples of what your paper might look like, um, examples of your cover page and an abstract, what that could look like, as well as um, further information on how to get um, access to other online um, examples. But I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has anything specific about APA or MLA or tutoring services or library services, I can answer anything up to um, for that. So you can either chat, or, um, you can put that in the chat box or you can put um, Yes, and I did notice in the chat that um, you um, that's absolutely right. Research papers generally are APA, um, but there are a lot of um, humanities research papers um, that are not necessarily scientific in terms of the like researching science that might use MLA. So uh, I know at FSCG I see lots of papers that are research in nature that are. Um, MLA as well, so it's not a strict um, divide between you only use APA for research. And the most important thing is to always follow what your um, instructor provides you as guidance. And this is a list of some of the most helpful libguides that we might that might um, talk about what we um, discussed today. The APA style, the Chicago style. Um, some digital writing tools, how to get to um, writing tutoring. Um, the digital writing tools give some ways to kind of quickly get some proofreading. Um, it's computer generated, so it's not gonna catch everything, but it might catch your typos. It might catch some basic grammar issues, um, like maybe a subject verb or commas and those types of things. Um, but you can still access all of the tutoring services, whether it's writing, science, math, foreign language, computers, all of us are online. So um, you can access us for those types of questions. Um, and then academic writer is what I mentioned for the um, APA style specifically. And research companion has some support in terms of how to write and how to, Kind of structure your paper from a content standpoint is also and also um, how to evaluate the uh, information that you're using within your paper. So um, what are the best types of sources to use or not use? And then uh, finally, um, I have some web resources here. The APA site, the MLA site, um, Chicago style site. I often use the Purdue OWL writing um, labs resources. They have some really great examples and explanations. The website itself can be a little overwhelming when you first look at it because it's so much information. But if you just kind of look around for what you're specifically looking for, um, and they do have a search function, um, they can give you some really great um, examples. And it's well explained and they have different ways of presenting the information. They have PowerPoints and uh, posters, different things that you can look at to kind of address your learning needs. And finally, I listed Santa Fe College's um, APA site. I found their LibGuide for APA to be extremely helpful when I was updating my materials from APA 6 to APA 7. Uh, they had a lot of great examples, and so that was very helpful to me when I was working on that. Um, so they also have guides for MLA and um, Chicago as well. It's kind of the beauty of working on um, bibliographies now. It's that we can um, kind of access everybody's ideas. So kind of looking at examples from everywhere and anywhere can kind of give us a really great idea of how to do something because many times what we have when we're working on a bibliography is an imperfect um, 
kind of capture of what the, the what we're trying to explain and in a bibliography citation. And so we want to get as close as possible to give the most correct and the, the best information that we can, but sometimes it's helpful to see other examples um, to see what someone did in that situation if it's kind of a strange or a different site. Any questions? You can always contact me directly at um, my FSCJ email. And anyone who would like any of the materials I talked about today, I can send out the PowerPoint slides or the um, handouts that I mentioned. I'm happy to send those. Um, just let me know. Okay, well, if there is no, um, if there's nothing further, this was a lot, a long 40 minutes of uh, citation. So anybody who thinks of something later, feel free to email me anytime. Um, you can also book appointments with me through BrainFuse, um, through your MyFSCJ. And I think that's it. Have a great day, everybody.